Hi everyone, my name is Danny Vole from the Swinburne node of ADAX, the Astronomy Data and Computing Services, and this is a tutorial on relational databases and the SQL language. In this tutorial, we will introduce the basics of what a database is and what it is used for, then we will introduce a language called SQL used to interact with a database along with some examples using the MySQL Workbench software. And finally, we will look at a few astronomy-specific examples using SkyServer, the Sloan Digital SkySurvey online database access. A relational database is a digital representation of a relational model of data. In other words, a database expresses how information is linked together. A typical database stores the organized data into tables, containing rows and columns similar to a spreadsheet. In a database, we want to keep track of information relative to items or objects and their relative properties. An item can be as varied as people, products, astronomical phenomena, and so on. Here, for example, our object would be a student and the properties are related to the student. For example, a student has an identification number, a first and a last name, and also a date of birth. The power behind a database is to keep track of a large number of objects. Here, we have eight different students with their own properties. As we mentioned previously, to keep track of many objects, a database uses tables. In a table, the different columns correspond to the properties of our data, and the rows correspond to the different items. Here, our columns are properties, and each row is an item. This is a database in its simplest form. The basic entity of a database is a table. In a database, we need to specify the data type required to store the information of a column in memory. The type can be as simple as an integer or a string of characters, and can also be more complex, like a date or binary data. The content of a table is unordered. We can think of this content as a set in the mathematical sense of the word. Each row needs to be unique. To make each row uniquely identifiable, we use a constraint called a primary key. Primary keys must contain unique values and cannot be empty. In addition to the basic information about our student, say we would like to also keep a record of which class was taken by a student at a given year. We could simply add a new column for each year and write down the class taken during that year. Unfortunately, this introduces a lot of redundancy in our table, where a new column will need to be added every year. Instead of putting everything in a single table, we want to split the information into different entities and then create relations between them. The process of splitting logical entities into multiple tables is called normalization. On the left, we have the students table that includes all the basic information about our students. On the right, the new classes table contains all the information about which class was taken by which student at a given academic year. The cardinality of a relationship type will constrain the number of occurrences that an item can appear in a table. Common cardinalities include one-to-one, one-to-many, -to -one, one -to and many-to-many. -many. Let's look into a few examples. First up, the one-to-one -one relation. Here, we have two tables. On the left, we have our regular students table. And on the right, we have a student program table, indicating us which program a student is following. In this case, a student is tied to a specific program and cannot take two, hence a one-to-one -one relation. Next up, the one-to-many relation. Here, we have the same tables that we presented earlier with the students and the classes. In this case, a row from the students table can be associated to multiple rows in the classes table. For example, a student can take multiple classes over multiple years. Therefore, we call this link a one-to-many relation. Finally, we have the many-to-many -many relation. Here again we have two tables, a books and an authors table. And we can imagine that a single book can be written by either one or multiple authors and that one author can write multiple books. Therefore, a many-to-many -many relation. In practice, 
A many-to-many -many relation is often managed with an associative table that breaks down this many-to-many -many relation into two one-to-many relations. In this case, the primary key of the book's authors table would be the joint columns book ID and author ID. Getting back to our previous example, we can note that the ID column in the classes table is no longer sufficient to uniquely identify a row. In this case, we would have to use the joint information about the ID and the academic year to uniquely identify our row. In this case, these two columns would be our primary key. 